Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Now, over the years, there have been plenty of movies about monsters. But you know what we never hear about? The pets of those monsters. And I, for one, am tired of it. Which is why this episode is about Dracula's dog. Yes, this is a real movie, and no, it's not very good. The movie starts with these Romanian soldiers blowing up a field for some reason. And no, I don't know what they were blowing up or why. Who knows? Maybe they were just bored. Quite honestly, if I was just sitting around with a bunch of explosives, I'd be looking for things to blow up too. And it looks like they've uncovered a tomb. But not just any tomb, Count Dracula's tomb. So they're like, we need an archaeologist, stat. And they tell the one guy to stand guard for the night, which would suck so much. I mean, come on. There's not even a comfortable place to sit. And plus, you know, you gotta hang around dead vampires all night, so there's that too. Suddenly, everything starts shaking and, okay, at this point, I don't care what my orders are. There is no way I'm staying in there. And for some reason, this guy actually opens the coffin. And not only that, he sees a stake in a body and pulls it out. There are certain situations where pulling it out is a good idea. This is not one of them. I'm talking about wood, by the way. Just to be clear, there's a lot of you who like to think that everything is an innuendo on this show, but it's not. So just calm down. I mean, look, all right, I get it. You've been sitting there all night, you're bored, you're looking for some excitement, but dude, do something else, anything. What exactly were you trying to achieve here? Is this some half-assed version of grave robbing? Did you think the steak would be valuable? I mean, it'd be kind of cool to show your friends, but that's pretty much it. Suddenly, the body starts moving and he's really freaked out. I mean, geez, who could have seen this coming? It turns out it's not a vampire, it's a vampire dog. It's Zoltan, the Hound of Dracula. But how did this dog become Dracula's dog? I know you're dying to find out. Well, get ready for the origin story of a lifetime. Basically what happened was Dracula was gonna drink this woman's blood. This dog started barking and woke her up. So Dracula got super pissed, turned into a bat and bit the dog. And ever since then, Zoltan was a vampire dog. And I have to say, you can't just go around biting dogs, Dracula. Having a dog is a big responsibility. Are you gonna take care of that dog? Are you gonna feed it? Are you gonna walk it? Are you gonna pick up its crap? I'm telling you, I'm not seeing that happening. You've got too many excuses built in, you know? Like, oh, I, I would walk the dog today, but uh, it's, it's sunny out and I can't walk him at night. You know, it's, it's dangerous. Maybe a cat would have been a better alternative because, you know, they just do whatever the hell they want. Anyways, back to the tomb. Zoltan grabs another coffin and pulls it down. And I should mention this now, the dogs in this movie are incredible. Working with animals is always tough. I can only imagine what it was like on this movie, but the things they got these dogs to do, it's one aspect of the movie that I was pretty impressed, I have to say. So Zoltan removes the stake out of the skeleton and it brings his master back to life who isn't Dracula, it's the guy who owned the dog named Veit Schmidt, who is now no longer just a skeleton. He's got some meat on his bones, good for him. Anyways, he tells Zoltan that they need to go find their new master. And this is what I don't get. This tomb is for the Dracula family. They're all Draculas in there. But you know, this guy wasn't, he was just a servant. So why does he get a spot in there? I mean, when Bezos dies, is his personal chef gonna get a spot in his space tomb? I say space tomb because I'm just assuming he's gonna wanna launch it into space. And another thing, they're looking for a new master, right? A living Dracula family member? Do I have to spell it out for you? I mean, the whole tomb is filled with Draculas. So why not just crack one of them open and take the stake out? That's how you came back to life. What am I missing here? Anyways, the army gets there the next day and they're like, holy crap, it's a vampire tomb. And now we have Inspector Bronco. He's inspecting um, this whole thing. And he's like, word can't get out about this. Otherwise it will terrify the whole village. And again, it seems like the answer is right there in front of you. 
I mean, you were blowing stuff up yesterday, so just blow up the bodies and the tomb and then just fill it in. Done. Then, if anyone from the village starts asking questions, you can just say, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, there's no tomb. I mean, go see for yourself. Nothing there except a giant smoking crater and little pieces of bones everywhere. Nothing out of the ordinary. So the inspector is like, all right, I figured out that Veit Schmidt is the one who wasn't in his coffin, which means he came back to life. He's only half vampire, which means he can walk around during the daytime and he has to find a new master. Turns out the Dracula bloodline isn't completely dead. There is one remaining member, Mike Dracula from Los Angeles. Also, he's not a vampire, he's just a regular ass guy. So the Major is like, all right, Inspector, your special assignment is to stop Weitschmidt from finding Mike Dracula, because once he finds him, um, I don't know, just stop him. We can't have an undead half vampire roaming around the streets of LA. There's too many already. So Veit and Zoltan are now on this ship that I guess is going from Romania to Los Angeles. How did he get aboard this ship in the first place? I don't know, it's not like he has any money. And you might be wondering how he even knows where to go or who he's looking for. Well, he knows because while the inspector and the major were discussing Mike Dracula and his whereabouts, Veit Schmidt was hiding in the same room somehow. So, yeah. Pretty sneaky. And now that he's in Los Angeles, Vite decides to do what most people do while visiting LA, spend the night wandering around a cemetery. So now we're introduced to Michael Dracula and his family, which unfortunately are not called the Draculas because Michael goes by the name of Michael Drake. And that's a good question for the comment section. If you were in that situation, would you change your last name or would you keep the last name Dracula? I think I'd keep Dracula because I mean, what an icebreaker when you meet somebody new. But then again, you know what? Actually, that would get old really fast because you know every single person you meet would be like, hey, Mark Dracula, any relation to Count Dracula? And then you have to be like, oh yeah, never heard that before. Anyways, it looks like the Drakes are going on a camping trip and bringing their dogs with them along with Michael's gun. Sweetheart, I know how you feel about guns, but on a camping trip, they're an absolute necessity, you know? It's true, when you go camping, there's no telling what you might have to defend yourself against. Bears, wolves, Sasquatch. I know you think I'm joking, but let's be real here. If you do run into Bigfoot, I think there's a better chance of it being a life or death situation rather than a Harry and the Henderson situation. Even though that is the situation I would prefer, I mean, come on, it'd be hilarious. <laughs> so much fun. Anyways, Veit and Zoltan arrive at the house while everyone is asleep, and Zoltan climbs up on the roof to get into Mike's bedroom, but one of the roof tiles falls off, causing the family dogs to start barking. And see, this is where having a vampire cat would have been better. That cat would have snuck in there without anyone knowing. Cats are super creepy like that, you know? You could spend hours in a room and not know that a cat is in there with you. You know I'm right. So the next day, Michael is going through some old family photos and finds a picture of Count Dracula with Zoltan because that's how hilarious this movie is. The family leaves on their camping trip, but they're being followed by Vite, who's driving a hearse because that's inconspicuous. How did he get a hearse? Well, he got it at the cemetery. I guess they leave the keys in them. So they find their camping spot and now Vite is just standing there being weird. I mean, come on, man, it's the summer. Put on some light colored clothes, blend in. And also I gotta ask, why are you even trying to find a new master. I mean, you're free, you can do whatever the hell you want. The last time this guy was alive was 300 years ago. If I woke up 300 years from now, the first thing I would do, probably go to the bathroom, but the second thing that I would do is start learning about this new world that I was in. I mean, aren't you curious as to what all this new stuff is and how it works? And that's another thing, how does this guy know how to drive a car? I mean, it's kind of a jump going from a horse and buggy to a stick shift. So now it's nighttime and after dumping an entire bag of Sour Patch Kids in his mouth, 
Veidt tells Zoltan that it's time to go get Mike. By the way, this actor is named Reggie Nalder, and he is not constantly pursing his lips. It just looks that way because he has a very distinctive look due to these disfiguring burns that he had on his face. Uh, he was a big character actor for a while. But then some wandering camper stumbles upon the hearse, and he's like, Hey, wait a minute, there's not supposed to be a hearse parked here. I'm gonna report this. Yeah. See, now, this guy could have kept going on his way, but no, he just had to be a tattletale. And everybody knows what happens to tattletales. They get torn apart by 300-year-old vampire dogs. At this point, Vite is like, Hey, Zoltan, we need help with this. You gotta go and bite other dogs on the neck to turn them into vampire dogs as well. So now Inspector Bronco has arrived in town, and he drives right to their campsite, and he's like, Yeah, hi, you don't know me, but you're actually a Dracula, and there's this half-vampire guy who used to be a servant for your great-grandfather, and he's alive again somehow, and he's looking for you because he wants to serve you. And quite honestly, if I was in Michael's shoes, I'd kind of be wondering what the downside to all of this is. So you're telling me this guy wants to be my zombie vampire butler? He's gonna wait on me hand and foot, do whatever I say, take out the trash, mow the lawn, do the laundry. And when does he get here? because it sounds like my life is about to get a lot easier. So Bronco is like, we gotta kill this guy because, um, well, bad things are probably gonna happen. Seriously, dude, this is totally real. I mean, has anything weird happened to you since you got here? And Mike is like, yeah, we were attacked by some dogs. And I mean, there you go. What more proof do you need? Dog attacks equal vampire stuff. Everybody knows that. Your wife and your family must go back home. I have rented a fisherman's cabin nearby. And I love how Michael just goes along with this. He's like, okay. Hello? Like, dude, some guy just shows up out of nowhere and tells you that you're the great-grandson of Count Dracula, THE Count Dracula, and that some undead half-vampire is coming to find you, and you're just like, sounds plausible. Okay, I'll believe you. Michael, can you trust this man? Baby, I trust him. Now you trust me. Okay. Okay, so his family leaves, and I would really like to know what he told them. I mean, did he honestly go up to his wife like, Well, honey, I'm sorry, but we gotta cut the family vacation short this year because there is some Dracula shit going on, and I am right in the middle of it. Anyways, they get to Bronco's cabin, and he tells Mike that normal weapons will be useless but he has some wooden stakes in the car and that he'll show Mike how to use them. I will show you how to use them. You know, Branko, I don't think I've got the stomach for this sort of thing. When the time comes, you will know exactly what to do. Yeah, I don't think that I will. In fact, I don't think that you think that I will. I mean, you just said you're going to teach me how to use a wooden stake, so you don't even think that I'll know how to use that. And now you're saying that when the time comes, I'll just know what to do? Well, which one is it? I don't even know what I'm looking for. How big is this guy? When is he coming, exactly? See, these are the details that I need. Also, do you have anything to do while we're waiting around for this guy? I mean, I brought, uh, I brought Uno. Have you ever played Uno? Pretty fun, as long as you play by the rules. My, my wife seems to think that you can uh, stack cards you know, like she puts down a plus two and a plus four and then another plus two. And she's like, oh, pick up eight. No, don't think so. That is not in the official rules. I have read them very thoroughly. And uh, if that's how you play, <laughs> this is not going to work out. I'm going to walk out of here right now with the cards. So at this point, the dogs have found the cabin and they start going after it as if these guys owe them money. Breaking windows, scratching up the siding, tearing the roof apart. I mean... Bronco rented this thing. He's gonna have a hard time getting his deposit back. And look, I'm sure this situation is very scary. These dogs seem pretty determined to get in there, but if owning a dog has taught me anything, it's that if that cabin has a vacuum cleaner in it, you've got nothing to worry about. Best line of defense. Again, I have to say these dogs were fantastic in this movie. They did a great job at making these dogs appear vicious. It really looks like they're trying to get in this cabin. Anyways, Zoltan finally falls through the roof and I guess his mission is to bite Mike and turn him into a vampire. But suddenly the sun comes up, 
really fast and the dogs run away. Bronco is like, hey Mike, let's go all the way back to your campground because I really don't want to be around here when the owners of this cabin find out about this. Also, I gave them a fake credit card and a fake name. So they drive back to the campground and this takes all day, apparently. Meanwhile, Veit Schmidt is doing what he's been doing basically this entire movie, standing there and watching. Aha, uh -huh. so now we're looking for dogs instead of vampires? Look, Mike, just do what he says, no matter how ridiculous it seems. Have you ever defended yourself against a 300 year old half vampire before? No. And this guy has a trunk full of wooden stakes, so he clearly knows what he's doing. I think. So Bronco says he's going to look on the other side of the hill, and that Mike should go over by the lake, because that's what you should do in this situation. Split up and go searching around in the dark. And what is Mike even looking for? The vicious dogs that attacked them and tore apart the cabin? Yeah, that sounds like fun. Bronco finds the hearse, and Vite jumps out and starts trying to kill him, because... He can't risk another person reporting him for being parked illegally. I have to say, Vite is pretty strong for a dead guy, but not strong enough because Bronco kicks his ass and impales him with the stake. And in this moment, I think I know exactly what Bronco is thinking. He's probably like, okay, I really hope this guy is Vite Schmidt and not just some random guy living in a hearse in the woods because if that's the case, combined with the cabin incident, I don't think I'll ever be welcome back on this campground. At least for a few months. So I guess Mike is coming back from looking around the lake and then suddenly he sees a bunch of dogs barking and running at him and he's like, ah oh, crap, I only have one stake. This isn't gonna work at all. He takes cover in the car, which doesn't start because of course not. And this is when he notices that one of the dogs is his dog. And Zoltan is the same dog in that old picture of Dracula he found. This must be Dracula's dog. What are the chances? Finally, the car starts and he drives off, but then he sees his other dog and he's like, hey, get in the car. But holy crap, his eyes are glowing. And glowing eyes is the universal sign of an evil pet. So if your dog or cat ever has glowing eyes, there is a 100% chance that they will try to kill you at some point. So just know that. So now Mike is chasing after Zoltan, and once he's got him cornered, he's like, Hey, Zoltan, take a look at this. And it turns out that Zoltan is really turned off by silver necklaces. So much so that he falls off a cliff. And this might be the funniest part of the movie, because the dog has a human scream. And now Mike has to figure out just what the hell he's gonna tell his wife and kids. I mean, telling them that you're a descendant of Count Dracula is one thing, but telling them that you had to kill the family dogs because they turned into vampire dogs? That's gonna suck. You know, because then the kids are gonna be like, well, can we get a new dog? And that's like, oh god, I have to go through all that again. And you gotta train it and hope that it doesn't turn into a vampire too. And you gotta I think at that point you gotta tell the kids, look, if this one turns into a vampire, you're driving the stake through its heart, all right? But in the end, it turns out that one of the puppies that they brought along is still alive and is a vampire dog, which could mean a sequel, but it's been 46 years and there hasn't been one, so let's just knock on wood as far as that's concerned. Like I said, this movie isn't that great. The plot is pretty stupid. But again, the dogs were amazing in it though, and Stan Winston actually did the makeup design for this movie. Also, I have to say, this movie looks fantastic. The HD transfer is super clear, the textures look great. Sometimes with these older movies, especially the low budget ones, you never know what you're gonna get in terms of the technical side. And also, depending on how the film was stored over the years, there might be some deterioration, but this looks really nice. The poster, however, is something that I think leaves much to be desired. This just looks weird and kind of funny. It's almost as if it looks like these are Dracula's legs, but that's pretty much it for this one. As usual, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all next time. Also, I need bug spray. I am getting eaten alive out here. It's terrible. It's one of the things that I hate about camping, you know? It's why I bought the camper, because then I can go camping, but it's camping, but also kind of not camping. It's comfortable camping is what it is. And the one thing I like about the camper is that, you know, there's, there's a toilet in the camper. And this, 
this cabin you rented. This is this really a cabin? This feels like just a a luxurious outhouse. And I also noticed that there is no toilet in here. There is a bucket over there. What is that bucket for? You've got too many excuses built in. I would pick up its crap, but you know, uh, these little bags, the plastic's pretty thin and uh, the dog eats a lot of garlic. So, you know, that's out. Which unfortunately are not called the Draculas because Michael goes by the name of Michael Drake, which is kind of disappointing because the Draculas sounds like it would be the name of a great sitcom. Like a uh, family of, of vampires, the Draculas who were brought back to life after, you know, 300 some odd years, and now they gotta navigate living in 2023. Just be filled with those, you know, jokes. They pick up an iPad, they're like, whoa, what, what's this? What am I saying? No, that'd be stupid. That show would suck. What am I thinking?